So let's wrap up on, we're taking all these tools together on our mega merge data set. Just like any other uh, data set, you can filter and process it. For example, this data set includes pitchers who might never go up to bat in a whole season, could end up skewing our analysis. An example would be David Ardsma, who in many years never even had a single, uh, single at bat. You see here in our second row, no at bats in any of these, uh, any of these years. So we can filter those out. Let's start out simply by filtering out all the, uh, all the years in which someone has no, has, uh, no at-bats. So we can do merge.all, AB is greater than zero. So now if we looked at merge.all, we see that at the very least, all at-bats are at least one. Now, one thing baseball fans like looking at is career records. That means we want to summarize across all the years that a batter played and find, for example, the total number of home runs each player hit. Recall that we learned how to do that kind of summary with by. For example, let's create a data set called summarized batters. And what we'll do is we'll take merged all, and uh, we'll say we want one column, total home runs, to be the sum of the home runs for that player, and we tell it we want to organize it to, to perform these summaries based on player ID. So on each player ID, sum up the home runs, save that as total HR. So now we can see we created a new data table that contains each player's ID and their total career home runs. But in the process, since the only thing we're summarizing by is this player ID, we've lost the actual, the actual real name, their first and last name. So uh, there's a simple way around that. First, recall how we actually got the name into, into the salaries data set, and let's try the same trick again. So there's this earlier line with the name colon equals paste. So let's do summarized batters, name colon equals paste, first, last, so we'll do that on the merge data set, correction. And right, now we, we've added to merged all a name column. You can see that here is the last column. Now when we perform this summary, now when we perform this summary, let's do it not just on the player ID, but also on their name. That tells us we want to keep the name in the new summarized data set. So now we've summarized in these two columns, we get the new column and player ID and their actual name. So now just like any data table, we could sort it to find out who the top home run hitters are. So that would be summarized batters, and then we'll call it order total HR, then a comma, I've sorted it. And baseball fans won't be surprised at the top we can see Barry Bonds, Hank Aaron, Babe Ruth, and some other legendary baseball hitters. So the same way we can summarize by other statistics like total number of hits or total number of runs. For instance, here let's put total R equals sum R for total number of runs total h equals sum h for total number of hits. Now we've saved all that career information into summarized batters. Total home runs, total runs, total hits. So the more a player gets hits in baseball, the more chance they have to actually score runs. So that means it's not surprising that there's a correlation between them. We can take a look at that correlation through ggplot. Your ggplot of summarized batters is on our summarized data. Total hits versus total runs. And we tell it we want a scatter plot. So we can see the clear correlation between the number of hits a player gets and the number of runs. So far, each of these summaries has been of one statistic, the total number of home runs or the total number of hits. But some baseball statistics are calculated based on multiple of a player's statistics. 
So for example, consider the batting average. A batting average is the number of hits a player gets divided by the number of times he goes up to bat. So in our home run uh, data set, a hitting data set, we can see, for instance, that for see, yeah, here for Hank Aaron in 1955, we can see he had see we had 100, uh, 189 hits out of 602 at bat. So we'd calculate his batting average as 189 over 602 would be his batting average. Now, what if we wanted to compute uh, career batting averages for every one of these players? It turns out that's just as easy with this summary operation. So let's set it up as, as batting average. We'll say this as a new column in this summarized da data table, which is going to be the sum of all hits divided by the sum of all at-bats. Notice that in this summary operation, we're using two different columns. We're bringing them together into one value. Now we can see in summarized batters created the batting average. So this kind of summarizing operation really allows us to it does generate any kind of statistic we're interested in, which we can then, for instance, plot if we want to know the history, uh, the, uh, if we want to know batting averages distribution, we would do batting average histogram and find out the distribution of historical batting averages, seeing that they center around about 25%. With a large uh, column here of people with zero batting average, there would mostly be pitchers. So in this way, we're able to test hypotheses almost as fast as you can think of them. This loop of asking questions about your data and getting answers back is the core of exploratory data analysis.